Welcome to audiobook by Recollector. Chapter 161, The Plot is Really Unstoppable. Still, even if they knew each other, they didn't talk to each other openly, but Ramiru talked with Tamajiki through telepathy. Naturally, Tamajiki also learned this telepathy when Ramiru used it on him. Bastard, where the hell have you been playing around? Calm down, uncle. I have brought a lot of surprises. Also, let's talk later, and don't tell them my real identity since I want to hide my identity as a monster from them for a while. Okay, but you need to explain everything, okay. Okay, okay. Ramiru let out a helpless sigh before he realized that his squishy body had been poked by several people. Hey, a talking slime. Really? How can a slime talking? Do you have a problem with slime? Ramiru got annoyed. Still, Shiza blinked her eyes, then moved closer to Tamajiki and whispered. Inyagamai-kun, that's... Yes. Tamajiki nodded. He should also be coming from Japan. Shizu confirmed it as the sentence that came out from Ramiru was so familiar. Still, why are you sure that the slime came from Japan? Shizu asked in wonder as the people who came from another world didn't only come from Japan. Just say an instinct. Nevertheless, when they finished their introduction, the talking slime, Ramiru, brought all of them to the village where he lived. Still, Ramiru quickly realized the surprise that Tamajiki had talked about, especially when Shizu picked him up and whispered about her origin. Eh. Eh. You don't need to say eh twice. Calm down, okay. Ramiru had to say that even if Tamajiki was a nephew-like existence to him, this guy was more mature than him. Also, did Tamajiki become an adventurer somehow frankly, Ramiru had many things to ask, but let's just follow Tamajiki's idea to keep his identity a secret. Dash dash. Unlike before, the village had started to grow. The buildings were no longer dilapidated and almost destroyed hut-like buildings. Instead, it was like a yurt, the traditional Mongol house with the shape of a round tent used by nomadic groups. The inside was clean and comfortable. Moreover, Ramiru also gave them good hospitality as he served everyone grilled meat on the stone grilling. Tamajiki also wanted to talk with Ramiru, but it was harder than he had thought. Inyagamai. Inyagamai. Grill the meat for me. Damn. Don't steal the meat that Inyagamai has baked for me. Eating is a war. It's your fault for lowering your guard. Tamajiki was extremely popular with the three. Ramiru and Shizu. In the end, Ramiru and Shizu talked with each other about how she could meet Tamajiki. Yet, was it Ramiru's imagination that Shizu talked about Tamajiki so fondly when Shizu talked about him, her voice was soft, as if she was talking to her loved one. While listening to Shizu, Tamajiki also looked at him, who was close to the cute human adventurer. This guy, was he able to achieve a harem-like life like the typical protagonist of Ice Guy was Ramiru wasn't jealous, no, he was extremely jealous. Yet, Ramiru knew that he didn't even have a gender, so he could do nothing and just accepted the status quo. Nevertheless, Shizu also talked about his past to Ramiru as Rumiru told him about his past. Similar to Tamajiki, she thought that Ramiru was coming in the same era as Tamajiki, so she didn't feel that surprised by the development of the country since Tamajiki had told him a lot of things. Yet, if there was something that made her curious, how did Ramiru and Tamajiki know each other it felt like they had known each other from the beginning. However, Ramiru didn't mention this matter as he had promised Tamajiki not to say anything, so that is what he was going to do. Yet, he had to say Shizu was such a strong person, especially when he heard about Shizu's past, and it made him feel a bit guilty when he thought that he had tried to hide Tamajiki's identity. Yet, Ramiru decided to leave the matter to Tamajiki. Nevertheless, Shizu should be a grandma, right so, when Ramiru thought that Shizu bore a feeling for Tamajiki, it made him feel conflicted, but Shizu was a beautiful woman, so everything was okay, Right age didn't really matter. All that mattered was love, 
right especially when Tamajiki was also a monster. This made Rumuru more curious about what Tamajiki had been doing when he left. Fortunately, Rumuru's blunt side, who often talked thoughtlessly without thinking of anything, didn't come out. Nevertheless, Shizu didn't seem to hide her affection toward Tamajiki. Yet, how could she not be Shizu didn't have an experience with love since she had stayed alone most of her life? She was afraid of her curse-like power. Her power had robbed many people that she cared about. If she stayed with someone and felt affection toward them, then lost them once again, she was afraid that her heart might not be able to handle it anymore. Frankly, she hoped that she wouldn't have this feeling, yet the time she spent with him was kind of different. It was the first time that someone could make her heart flutter yet calm at the same time. Just staying by his side, even without saying a single word, was enjoyable. Still, Shizu looked at Tamajiki, who was so close to Ellen, then shook her head. Can you guide me around your village, Slime San? Of course. Ramuru nodded, then talked with Tamajiki through a telepath. Tamajiki nodded and let Ramuru leave with Shizu. Frankly, he had to say, as a doctor, he noticed that Shizu's condition was far from good. He had seen Shizu's power, which was a fire manipulation, but it seemed wherever she used it, her body would be in pain. Moreover, when he looked at her, she reminded him of Helga, the grandma he saw in the world of Asterisk, yet with a youthful body. By now, he had also mastered Helga's ability, which made him able to change his personal time and age. Naturally, this power was strong as he could make himself move fast by accelerating his personal time or making him appear as old or younger as he wished. Still, as he looked at the three idiots, he thought that it was time for them to part. He knew that the best way to get stronger was to stay by Ramiru's side, so that's what he was going to do. However, when all of them were eating, a sudden explosion stunned all of them. WH what's happening? Ah, my meat drops on the ground. No. Be serious. Tamajiki knocked the head of the three and then walked out of the tent before he saw an enormous pillar of flame, followed by the three. No one hesitated, and they ran in the direction of this pillar of flame before they saw Shizu was there, surrounded by an intense flame that burnt everything. As if noticing his presence, Shizu stared in his direction and used all of her to say, Please please leave. I can't suppress it anymore, quickly get away from me. Even with a feeble voice and pained body, she hoped all of them would leave her as she didn't want to hurt all of them. However, she soon lost control over her body and went in berserk, burning everything. Under the intense flame, Tamajiki stared at Ramuru with a helpless gaze. Chapter 162, Bitter Tamajiki had stayed with Shizu for a while, and he knew her condition well. Without a doubt, she was strong, and she was even stronger than the combination of Gido, Cavill, and Ellen. In conclusion, Tamajiki could tell that Shizu was quite healthy, but why did she suddenly go on berserk when she came here there was only one answer. It was the plot. The plot, what a fucking thing. He was angry when he thought how that kind older woman who warmly tried to comfort him every night was being tortured by the flame. Not toward the plot or Ramiru, but at himself, for underestimating everything. The protagonist's halo might not work on him anymore, especially with Jupiter, but the plot is different. The plot wasn't only aimed at the protagonist but at the entire characters in the story. When their time to serve the plot ended, then they would die or inexplicably enter a crisis. No one could be saved, and the only one that could stay alive was the protagonist. Tamajiki thought that by staying by Shizu's side, nothing would happen to her, but that didn't seem to be the case. The moment she left him, even if it was only for a moment, everything happened in an instant, and no one could stop it. He also couldn't stop it as he wasn't omnipotent. He might know the general plot, but when, where, and how it would happen, he couldn't tell at all since, unlike the story where he was only the observer, in this world, he was the participant. However, 
he could think about this matter later as he needed to save Shizu first. Shizu Sen. Shizu Sen. What's happening? Shizu. Shizu Izawa, don't tell me, she is the ruler of the explosives flames. The strongest fairy controller is hosting the flame fairy Ifrit in her body. Shizu Izawa. While Ellen called Shizu so many times, trying to wake her conscious, Cavill was confused, but Gido quickly realized Shizu's identity. Tamajiki, we need to save Shizu Sen. Ramura quickly approached Tamajiki. I know, uncle. Please, run away from me. I I don't want to hurt anyone again. Shizu was scared at this moment, especially when she thought that she would burn all the people she cared about again. That thought alone frightened her, especially when she couldn't control the spirit inside her body anymore. Don't underestimate me, Shizu Sen. I am not weak enough to be defeated by a mere fire spirit. Maybe, Ifrit was angry by Tamajiki's provocation that it strengthened its power to take over Shizu's body again. Shizu tried to control Ifrit and suppress it, but as she stared at Tamajiki's eyes, she decided to believe him before she closed her eyes. Her body then floated, and her entire body was taken over by Ifrit. Her appearance was no longer of that cute girl, instead, she became the high-level fire spirit of Ifrit. A flame set ablaze in the surrounding area, burning everything. Ramuru-sama, Master. The fire startled not only them but all the residents of the village, but fortunately, it seemed that Ifrit only targeted Tamajiki. Tamajiki. Inyagimai. Everyone was startled when Ifrit suddenly unleashed a giant fireball at Tamajiki. However, Tamajiki only calmly cut this giant fireball into several pieces, turning it into nothing. Everyone. Report. Ifrit has taken over Shizue Izawa's body and currently appears in a berserk state. Even if the Great Sage didn't say anything, he could tell that Shizu's condition, but having people confirm it also helped since it made him able to think of the countermeasure quickly. Unlike before, Shizu could control Ifrit from taking over her body and went on berserk, but with her advanced age, it was impossible for her to do it any longer. The reason why she appeared young was that Ifrit helped her to maintain her appearance, but even if her body and appearance were at the optimum state because of Ifrit, due to her advanced age, she was weakened, and she couldn't control Ifrit anymore. Yet, was spirit such a violent existence he had read that the existence of spirit was something that would lend its power to a human. The human that was chosen by the spirit could use the power of the spirit, but the one in front of him tried to take over Shizu's body. Maybe, there were some circumstances that he didn't know, either way, he had to stop it. Then, there was only one. Uncle, I will stop the fire, so can you use the predator on Ifrit? Harimuru was startled, but as he discussed this problem with Great Sage, he agreed. I can do it, but what are you going to do with the fire the flame was too intense, and he, who was close, felt that he would be burnt by it. However, soon, Ramura got the answer. All the flame that was about to burn everything was moving in a certain direction before they were all absorbed into Tamajiki's body. Everyone. While everyone was dumbfounded, the one that surprised the most was Ifrit. In the greater spirit, his power was stronger than any elemental. The temperature of his flame would vaporize anything instantly, yet those flames were absorbed into Tamajiki's body and did nothing. Even if Ifrit was unable to talk, his expression clearly showed that he was dumbfounded. WH what did you do, Tamajiki Ramura couldn't help but ask. I learned it. Learn learn what? Fire manipulation. From who? Ifrit. Learning and immune. These were two skills that Tamajiki owned. Yet, Ramuru didn't think that Tamajiki would be able to learn Ifrit's fire manipulation instantly. Then, soon, it was a battle between fire manipulation between Ifrit and Tamajiki, but in the end, Tamajiki won. All the fire that was unleashed by Ifrit was nullified by Tamajiki. However, how could Ifrit give up Ifrit used everything from body double?
creating a copy of himself and flame transformation to become a fire, yet it did nothing. All that flame was useless in front of Tamajaki. By then, Tamajaki appeared in front of Ifrit and held his blade. Ifrit tried to do a desperate action, but at that moment, the world stopped, and it felt his head slide down, cut down. It was elemental, so it was a spiritual life form, which meant, it was impossible for it to be cut down by the sword, yet at that moment, it felt like it was cut. Uncle. Here I am. Ramira jumped and then used Predator. Return Shizu-san, bastard. A dazzling light enveloped Ifrit before it was absorbed into his body. Shizu fell without energy, as if a doll had lost its string. Tamajaki caught her petite, weak body in his arms gently as if afraid that he would break her. Using Great Sage, he tried to check Shizu's body, and his expression turned ugly as the loss of Ifrit caused her body function to deteriorate so quickly that it wouldn't be weird for her to die in a week. Inyagami kun She opened her eyes lightly. She couldn't see clearly, but she could feel that it was him. I am here. Thank you. I am glad that I have met you. She could tell that her death was near, so she wanted to express the feelings she had buried in her heart. It might be a short time since we have met each other, but while you are quite naughty, you have more kindness than anyone. While she appeared beautiful, while she could talk, while she could stay alive. You might find it strange to hear something like this from, me, but I. I think I like you. Her voice was so low, feeble, yet she blushed and showed a satisfied smile, then lost consciousness in his arms. Congratulations, you have received spirit affinity. Usually, he would be happy, yet this reward felt bitter in his heart. Chapter 163, Stay Alive Tamajaki Even Ramiru didn't expect that Shizu would confess at this moment, or rather, wasn't this a flag wasn't this a flag where Shizu was confirmed to die he looked nervously at Tamajaki, but it was hard to gauge his expression when his bangs covered his expression. Uncle, can I leave the rest to you I will check her condition first. Okay, leave the rest to me. Ramiru nodded and decided to leave everything to Tamajaki first. Even though the damage was minimalized by Tamajaki, some panic was inevitable as the power of Ifrit was enough to burn this village to ash. It was fortunate that Tamajaki was there and also learned flame manipulation. Nevertheless, too many things happened, and he knew that he needed to do something, especially in the matter of support. Moreover, Ramiru also wanted to know about Shizu's condition, so after he called Rigurido, he went after Tamajaki. Cavill, Gido, and Ellen also followed, but Tamajaki stopped them since they didn't know anything, and it would disrupt him instead. Inyagami. Ellen wanted to say something, but she held it. After all, Shizu's confession was almost heard by everyone. Ellen was an elf, and with her ears, how could she miss it however, this matter was small compared to Shizu's condition. Tamajaki brought Shizu to the best tent where Ramiru was living and then put her on the bed. Report. Shizu Izawa's condition has been stabilized after you made her body young. Personal time manipulation. It was the ability that he learned from Helga in the world of Gikasan. Previously, it could only affect his age and his inner time, but with the help of Great Sage and Season Jutsu talent, he could develop it so that he could also affect the time of others. That way, he made Shizu's age younger, so her weakened condition was erased, and her body was as good as when she was young. However, it might be hard to say her condition was as good as before since now, she didn't have Ifrit on her body. In the eyes of Shizu, Ifrit's existence might be like a curse, but it was also the one who gave her power. In other words, the reason why Shizu could still stay alive until now was Ifrit. Without Ifrit, she would be dying. Watching her, who slept soundly on the bed, he wondered what he should do. For him, getting rewards from the women was enough, but he realized that each of those heroines had their own problems, and this problem also affected him. It was like Claudia before, who wished to die and almost made him wage war on the entire world. 
leaving Claudia might be okay, abandoning her and letting her die, especially when he didn't really have that strong feeling toward her, yet maybe, once again, he realized that he was really too kind-hearted. It was the same case with Shizu, who was sleeping in front of him. Shizu was already at an advanced age, and even if he made her body younger, it was already at the limit. In the end, a human was a human. Their lifespan was limited, no matter how he tried to make her younger. Even if their lifespan was possibly extended, the change in their emotions and bodies was inevitable. After all, unlike a yukai, monster, elf, and any other spirit life forms, a human was such an existence. They were ephemeral beings. By now, he could guess more or less that Shizu should have two years worth of life. Affirmative. Shizu Izawa can only live for two years. Tamajiki rubbed his face, and he wondered what he should do. Should he just let her live for two years and die as a human like she wishes for or should he help her extend her life but change her race because of his selfishness since he doesn't want her to die he really wondered what he should do. Frankly, he didn't have strong feelings toward this woman, but just watching her dying in two years would make a bitter feeling in his mouth. Still, was there a way for a human to extend their natural lifespan and live forever affirmative? Such a method is possible. If so, then how with his knowledge and great sage, he quickly found several ways to extend Shizu's lifespan. The first was maginization, a method to turn her into a monster. This should have been the method used to extend Shizu's life originally, as she had an Ifrit on her body. Originally, if she wished to merge with Ifrit, then she would become a Magin and extend her lifespan, but she didn't want that since she wished to die as a human, and she felt her power was nothing but a curse. The second method was to possess the body of someone. By using magic, Shizu could steal the body of someone and transmigrate it into that person's body. However, with those two methods, it was impossible for Shizu to agree with such a method as she was kind. She also wasn't greedy with her life, so those methods were impossible to implement. Then, the third, which was the last, was to evolve. Similar to other races, a human could also evolve through arduous training or life and death threats, evolving them to a higher existence known as enlightened, saint, or divine human. To become one among that existence was the only way for a human to extend their lifespan naturally. The enlightened and saint aside, the divine human was almost impossible to achieve since it was only the true hero that could achieve it. However, Shizu wasn't a true hero, and she had been living until now, yet she was unable to become either enlightened or saint, showing her limited talent. For him, it was sad, but what could he do not everyone was like him or Ramiru, who had an incredible cheat. If he didn't meet this woman, then he wouldn't be troubled at this moment. You really make a lot of trouble for me. He lightly touched her bangs helplessly, but at this moment, he didn't give up. Was there any other way affirmative, you can wait for her to pass away and reincarnate her by using life and death magic? He let out a sigh. Great sage, next time, don't ever suggest such a method. Affirmative. Maybe, it realized and felt the feeling of its host that it agreed without saying anything. He knew that great sage wasn't wrong, and it was normal to suggest something like that as it was only born late without knowing what his bottom limit was. Great Sage didn't know right and wrong, and instead of getting angry, he should teach it. Frankly, such a method was possible, and if Great Sage told him so, then a life and death magic existed, and he could learn it without any problem, but if he waited until Shizu died, then reincarnate her, he felt that something might change inside him. He felt that his existence might become hideous and that he couldn't bear it anymore. He might be a villain and a scoundrel, but he still had a bottom line. Affirmative. Everything has been recorded for future reference. Good. Tamajiki stared at Shizu and knew that she only wished to become a human, so that's what he was going to do. If any method that he could think of was impossible, then he would create a new one or search for a method in another world. It might be impossible for others, but not for him. He was going to make her stay alive, 
accompany him, and become part of his harem. He was selfish for doing this, but wasn't she even more selfish for confessing to him at the end of her life so, don't blame him for being selfish and wanting her to stay alive. Staring at her sleeping face, he saw his hand was held by her subconsciously. As for whether it was a coincidence or any other, he wasn't sure, but for now, he just stayed there and accompanied her. Dash dash. Dash dash. If she is going to stay alive, then what do you think he should do? Is there an anime or something that can make a human become immortal? If so, can you make a suggestion for me? Chapter 164 Everything is the fault of Uncle. Tamajiki. Tamajiki turned and saw Ramiru bouncing toward him quietly. Uncle. He nodded and greeted him softly. How is Shizu-san? Ramiru asked worriedly. She is okay. You don't need to worry. Really? Yeah, who do you think I am? Ramiru had to say Tamajiki's words were arrogant, but somehow those words were extremely reliable. Tamajiki smiled, but he didn't tell the truth to Ramiru since it was better to keep this matter a secret until he found a way to solve Shizu's problem. Moreover, he didn't want at the end of her life, everything was looking at her with pity and sadness. Her life was already full of misery, so this time, it would be full of happiness. Watching his reassuring expression, Ramiru also let go of his worry and smiled since he knew that everything was alright. Still, Tamajiki knew that Shizu would become Ramiru's strength, but because she didn't die and Ramiru didn't use Predator on her, Ramiru's strength was naturally weakened. Moreover, it was impossible for Ramiru to become a human now. Nevertheless, it was also why he let Ramiru use Predator on Afrid before. Still, while Predator was a good ability as it was able to consume everything from a monster, a weapon, and many others while inheriting the traits and also the skills of those consumed, the skills that were inherited were weaker than the original. In other words, the effect was far weaker than his previous eyelage, but it made Ramiru able to learn the intrinsic skills, which he couldn't learn, which was something that one needed to debate whether his previous eyelage or predator was better. However, he didn't need an Ifrit, as his flame manipulation was better. Tamajiki also knew that he had to compensate Ramiru, so this was how he was going to do it, but he knew it was far from enough, and he wanted him to become even stronger since he had stamped him as his ally, so the stronger his ally, the better it was, right after I become the demon lord, let's go to another world again. He had something that he had to achieve, but it was impossible to do it in his world, Gakusen's world, or this world, so he could only go to a new world again, getting new heroines and gaining more power. Nevertheless, the conversation between him and Ramiru was quite good as Ramiru didn't know the truth about Shizu's lifespan, so there wouldn't be any depressing talk between them. Oh, right, I told you that I have a surprise, right? Oh, right. What is the surprise Ramiru asked curiously, wondering what Tamajiki was going to bring him. It's this. Tamajiki took out all the money inside his stomach, then an uncountable number of gold coins filled the entire room and almost washed Ramiru away. Ramiru was pushed away by countless pieces of gold coins, which was impossible as he was strong, but strangely enough, he didn't move, was pushed, and just stared at all the money that suddenly appeared in this place. What is this? Money. Tamajiki, I don't remember raising you like this. Ramiru thought that Tamajiki had robbed a kingdom, but since it had been done, then it couldn't be helped since he knew that they needed money to build a village. Still, while he couldn't praise Tamajiki's methods, he picked a few of the gold coins in his pocket, thinking that he could use them to visit the elf bar in the future. Calm down, uncle. I am not robbing anyone, and it is all legal. More importantly, you don't raise me. Also, calm down. Okay let me tell you how I get all of this money. Oh okay. I I am calming down. Ramiru took a deep breath. A slime might not need to breathe, but he needed to calm down. Still, it made him curious about how Tamajiki could get all the money without robbing a country or a kingdom. Then, 
Tamajiki started his tale, and Ramira became his listener. You have made a department store. Call it a shopping district, okay. Amazing. Once again, amazing. This was the only thing that Ramira could say. By now, Tamajiki might be able to make his own biography as a legendary businessman. Starting from potions, beauty, restaurants, hotels, and real estate, it continued to grow. Even if Ramiru wasn't there, he could vividly imagine the excitement, watching a business that grew from nothing into one that almost conquered a country. Tamajiki's base might be in the Bamand Kingdom, a small country near Great Jura Forest, but if Tamajiki was able to monopolize this kingdom with the power of money, then money wasn't a problem at all. Tamajiki, now, I appoint you as Ministry of Finance of our village. Use all the money to make more money. Ramira patted Tamajiki's shoulder happily with his tentacle-like hand. Is there such a position in the village? No, but I just created it. Aren't you just lazy and just put all the problems to me, uncle? Why didn't you say anything to Majiki's side? Well, I don't really mind since I like to make money. To Majiki Kun. Okay, stop. Stop. I have told you my story, so can you tell me what you did after you woke up? Ramuru nodded and also told to Majiki about his experience in the Dwargan. Still, Tamajiki had to say that Ramiru's experience was unique and one of a kind. It was amazing, especially the last part. Elf. Elf. Are they cute? Super cute. Ramiru excitedly told him about his experience with a group of beautiful elves. I see. Tamajiki nodded. It seems that it is necessary to conduct business in the Dwargan. The elf he met was only Ellen but he wanted to see more to check whether they were really as beautiful as it was told. Ramiru was speechless since this guy definitely didn't come for business. Tamajiki Kun, let me remind you, you are still in high school, you can't visit a bar. Who said that? That's. Ramiru stopped since he realized that no one could stop Tamajiki. Unlike in Japan, where there was an age limitation, in this world, there was no such thing. Everyone was an adult as long as they could work. Moreover, Tamajiki had a lot of money, so everything was possible. It's okay, uncle. I am just there to do business research. Our village will grow, and of course, we also need to do research on what kind of profitable business exists in this world. My purpose isn't something for something dirty, but it is for the future of this village. I see. Ramiru also let go of his entanglement, but as Tamajiki's uncle in this world, he also needed to take care of him. It can't be helped if it's for the future of this village, but when you go there, you need to bring me since I need to watch over you. Okay, uncle. You don't need to worry. I will bring you there. Let's have a party I mean, let's do serious research for the future of this village. That's right. Let's have a party I mean, everything is for this village. For the first time, their minds linked, and their relationship had become closer. Tamajiki and Ramiru held each other's hands and thought that their relationship was wonderful. Cough. 2x Tamajiki and Ramiru turned and saw Shizu had woken up. Are you two going to play at the bar Shizu asked kindly with a warm smile, yet strangely enough, her expression was far from kind. 2x everything is uncle's fault. Oi. Tamajiki and Ramiru quickly fought each other, but Shizu, who saw all of this, could only let out a helpless sigh, yet deep inside, she felt relief and was a little shy. Chapter 165, My Harem Life While Shizu woke up faster than they had thought, it was all good. Congratulations, Shizu-san, you will be alright from now on. I have also taken out the effort on your body. Ramiru was excited when he saw that Shizu was okay. Whether it was Tamajiki or Shizu, they were coming from the same world as him. He felt a comradeship, no, he felt that they were like his family as they were the only ones that he could trust, considering they were also coming from another world. Oh really? 
Still, Shizu was surprised as she listened to Ramiru's explanation. The great thing was that Ifrit was taken out of her body, yet another one was, I am all right. Yes. Ramiru nodded with a bright smile. Tamajaki has told me that you are all right. Shizu glanced at Tamajaki, who kept his mouth shut, but she only lightly smiled. I see, that's great. Right. By the way, you should rest now. Tamajaki interjected. Shizu had just gone berserk, and even if he had made her body younger, it didn't mean that she was okay. Oh, right? Should I bring food? Ramiru looked at Tamajaki. No, let her rest for a while until dinner, uncle. Okay. Ramiru nodded. By the way, did you also learn the knowledge of medicine and doctor? I learned it. Ramiru thought that his great sage and predator were good, but it seemed there had always been a bigger mountain outside. With that said, Tamajaki helped Chizu to take a rest. Even after her confession and knowing her situation, his expression didn't change. He didn't treat her with special care like she was the most fragile thing or look at her with pity. Instead, he just saw her like how he saw other people. Still, knowing that Shizu was okay, Ramiru decided to take care of the village as it was just being burnt by Ifrit. Fortunately, they didn't lack money now, and Tamajaki also brought many things that could be used to develop their villages. By the way, uncle, is it me, or has the numbers of the population increased? Yes, there are 5,000 of them. Did you name all of them? Of course. Ramiru nodded while puffing his chest proudly. Tamajaki. What's wrong? No, it's okay. I will introduce myself later. Okay. I will tell everyone about you too. While Tamajaki often left this village, without a doubt, the creator of this village was the two of them. Ramiru also thought about Tamajaki's strength, and having him as a thug was also good, but more importantly, as his god of wealth, he wanted everyone to treat him with the greatest respect. Nevertheless, monsters are races that are strict with their hierarchy. The strong get everything, and the weaks can only be eaten. That is the law of this forest. Ramiru said goodbye, and Tamajaki also thought to leave, but his hand was held by Shizu. Can you stay with me Shizu asked with a weak voice, yes. Neither of them said anything again, and he just watched her, who had fallen asleep, showing she was forcing herself to wake up before. Still, Ramiru, who had just left, thought about Shizu's confession before and wondered what Tamajaki was going to do. Yet even if he was curious, he needed to handle the village first. In the past few days, everything was peaceful. Shizu's condition also had been stabilized, but she still needed to rest. Ellen and the few goblins helped Shizu. In those times, he also met the leaders of the villages and several dwarfs that were in charge of building the village. When they met, he showed his hybrid form, causing them to shudder in fear yet also mesmerized by him. What's wrong, uncle? Still, Tamajaki looked at Ramiru, who was sulking. Humph. Ramiru pouted while looking away, feeling quite depressed as he realized that this guy was a traitor. They might be monsters, but why was this guy so handsome damn, handsome guy? Burn. What could Tamajaki do nothing? Anyway, Tamajaki could only watch an uncle who reincarnated into a slime sulk helplessly. Nevertheless, he knew that Ramiru wasn't serious and just joked around. Don't worry, uncle. You will become a handsome guy in the future. Huh, really Ramiru was surprised. Yeah, leave it to me. Tamajaki patted his chest, trying to reassure him. Not only will you become a handsome guy, but you can also taste delicious food and change your gender into a woman. Leaving the changing gender aside, I am interested in tasting the food. As a slime, Ramiru didn't eat, but it wasn't like he couldn't eat. Instead, he felt that it was meaningless, especially when he couldn't taste anything since he didn't have taste buds, so Tamajaki's promise made him interested. But what are you going to do? Not sure, 
but I will travel around the world for a while, but you don't need to worry, I will help you with the development of the village or the money. Don't forget to come back, okay Ramiru reminded Tamajiki since he had to say it felt lonely without Tamajiki. Don't worry, uncle. Tamajiki patted Ramiru's squishy top part and thought that he had to do something with Ramiru's body. He thought of making something similar to homunculus since he knew that such a thing existed in this world. However, he could do that later as he wasn't in a hurry. Nevertheless, the days for Cavill, Gitto, and Ellen to leave were near. Before they left, Ramiru gave them a reward, which was full rare grade equipment. In this world, equipment was graded from normal grade, rare grade, unique grade, legend grade, and god grade. As for his sword, it was a unique grade. As for Cerverista, it was a legend grade. As for why it didn't reach the god grade, it was because the material of the weapon wasn't good enough. If he wanted to make this weapon stronger, he had to take out the core and change the material for the holder of the core. However, he could think about this matter later. Shizu walked out of her tent and looked at Cavill, Gido, and Ellen. Her body was okay, and even if she was slightly weakened as she didn't have Ifrit on her body, she was still powerful as she owned a unique skill. As for what her unique skill was, he would explain it later. Are you not going back with us? Shizu San Ellen asked sadly. After they were on an adventure, she had always thought of Shizu as her older sister, so she was sad when she thought that she would part away. Yes, I will stay here. The three of them knew about Shizu's decision, and it was impossible to change, so what they could do was. Ramiru San, please take care of her. 3x The three of them bowed their heads at Ramiru. Yes, leave it to me. Ramiru nodded. Hearing that, they felt relief, but then they looked at Tamajiki. Inyagami, come on. Yeah, let's start our adventure again. Let's go. However. Sorry, I will stay here too. What 3x? This time, they couldn't stay calm any longer. Why? Do you hate us? Is it because of Cavill's bad breathing and Gido's snoring? Oi. 2x no, it's just that I don't plan to join you in the beginning. We have stayed for quite a while, and it is time for us to part away. I'm sorry. I have something that I want to do, and our path will have to part from here, but of course, we will meet each other again. 3x Gido and Cavill were helpless, but they could tell that Tamajiki wanted to do something different. However, Ellen couldn't accept it so easily. You will really go? Yes. Tamajiki was decisive, and he decided to leave Cavill's party. Ellen might be a wonderful girl, but he had something that he needed to achieve in this place, so they had to part away. Still, to the surprise of everyone, he was kissed. Ellen pulled him and kissed his lips in front of everyone. Everyone. Everyone forgot to breathe, and their pupils enlarged because of the surprise. However, Tamajiki and Ellen ignored all of them, pressing each other's lips until their lips parted as they stared at each other. Ellen. It's okay. I won't bind you, but remember. Her cold, soft hand touched his cheek, then lightly caressed. It's impossible for you to run away after you have stolen my girlhood, okay? Was this the eyes of a girl in love? Why had this girl's eyes become so scary suddenly? Tamajiki realized this girl was more dangerous than he had thought. Shizu san, please take care of him, okay? Ellen asked with a gentle smile. Ah, um. Shizu answered quietly, meekly, while lowering her head with a noticeable blush on her cheeks. What did those words mean yet? For one thing, Ramiru thought that Tamajiki's harem life was about to start. Chapter 166, True Form With everything that had been decided, Cavill, Ellen, and Gido left this village. They planned to leave by walking, but Tamajiki said, Do you want me to send you back? At 3x. Ignoring their confusion, Tamajiki said, Don't bite your tongue. Anyway, he had owned a lot of things for Ellen, and he could also trust the three of them, 
so he used his Shukichi to teleport to the Blue Mund Kingdom. 3x the three saw their surroundings melt like wax, and the scenery around them changed into the royal capital of the Blue Mund Kingdom. Then, I will go back first. Tamajiki was about to leave, but he was stopped by Ellen. Don't forget to visit me. Once a week. Ellen wanted more, but when she thought how fierce he was in bed, she decided that he should visit her once a week. If they did more, she was afraid that she might not be able to walk. Okay, okay. Tamajiki patted her head, kissed her, then left. Ellen touched her lips, watching the spot where he left, and let out a long sigh. She should have expected this, but she had to say it was rather hard to accept as she hoped that she could be his only one. Yet, it didn't matter since the official wife should be hers, okay nevertheless, Gido and Cavill wondered what they should do as the bodyguards in charge of protecting Ellen, yet what Ellen didn't know, her father also tasked the two of them to report in case a bastard tried to seduce Ellen. However, it was too late. Before they realized this, a bastard had already slipped under their radar, so what could they do now Gido and Cavill looked at each other and decided to pretend not to see anything. Yes, that's right. That's the best way. Meanwhile, Tamajiki returned, and as expected, he saw everyone in the same spot. Yo. Everyone. Don't yo me, bastard. Ramuru was startled when Tamajiki suddenly disappeared. Is that a teleportation Shizu asked curiously. No, it's an ancient martial art. Ancient martial arts. Shikuki, have you heard of it? Shikuki 2x. Shizu and Ramiru were familiar with this term, but the rest differed. However, it didn't matter how strong he was, the better their lives were. The thought of those hobgoblins was simple since what they wanted was just a stable life. Even if they had evolved, they remembered how hard their lives were when they were just goblins, so they treasured the stable life of them much. They loved and respected Ramiru, who changed them, so naturally, to Majiki, who was Ramiru's nephew, was also loved and respected by them. But, is it all right for you to leave her Shizu couldn't help but ask. She could tell that Ellen loved him so much, yet was it okay for him to leave Ellen just like that yeah, aren't you too heartless to leave her just like that Ramiru also thought the same. If possible, he wanted to bang as many girls as he wanted to, especially when he didn't have a chance to use his saber in his previous world, so when he had an opportunity to be reincarnated, he thought to graduate from his virginity. Unfortunately, he was slime, so he lost his saber. Tamajiki had such a wonderful girl, yet he just left her like that. Frankly, Ramiru was speechless and also jealous, but he didn't get that angry since he knew Tamajiki wasn't a human. It's okay. She might not be able to accept my form after all. Tamajiki smiled bitterly. True Form 2X. This word quickly made Ramiru understand everything. Ah. He wasn't sure whether it was possible for a human and a monster to be together, but he also understood Tamajiki's worry. What do you mean Shizu, who didn't know Tamajiki's true identity, was confused. Shizu-san, I won't lie to you, but like uncle, I am also a monster. Tamajiki was frank. A monster are you also reincarnated into a monster Shizu was surprised. That's right. Tamajiki looked at Shizu and asked, Do you want to see my true form? Yes. There was no hesitation in Shizu's words, and she looked at him with clear eyes. You will be disappointed. I won't. Shizu shook her head softly. No matter what your form is, my feelings won't change. Tamajiki stared at Shizu's eyes and saw that those eyes didn't waver even for a moment. He let out a helpless sigh, then said, Then, look at this. After a moment of hesitation, he turned into his yukai form, and once again, his monster form was shown to the world. At that moment, the world lost its voice. Everyone was trembling in fear, awe, and also worship, especially those who saw his form for the first time. His form was beautiful, yet fierce, 
like a god of beasts. His mere presence was enough to shake their entire souls. The Tempest Wolves and the first villagers were okay since it wasn't their first time to see this form, but those new villagers, the group of dwarfs, and Ramiru were speechless. Huge. This was what they thought the moment they saw him. With a weight towering 18 meters and a length of 40 meters, this form alone was enough to intimidate anyone. Ramiru once again realized that Tamajiki might have a complex about his figure, and it was also why Tamajiki kept his figure in the chibi form. Nevertheless, even though he was shocked, he was better than most of them as he had seen Feldera. Similar to Tamajiki, Feldera's body was also huge. Still, Ramiru understood this might be Tamajiki's complex. Yet, to the surprise of everyone, Shizu stepped forward. Her expression didn't change even if she saw him in this form. Instead, she stepped forward, hugged his mouth with her feeble arms tightly, and rubbed her face. What are you doing? When Tamajiki talked, he showed his sharp fangs, which were enough to tear even a mountain. See even with all of this, my feelings won't change, Tamajiki wasn't sure how someone could stay pure even at such an advanced age. He let out a helpless sigh before he turned into his hybrid form, becoming an existence closer to a god itself. Then, do what you want. I will do that. As he let out a helpless sigh, Shizu smiled. Still, because of this, the legend of white murder or the ultimate one might appear because of his existence. Tamajiki had a lot of things to do, and even with all of that, it didn't mean that he stopped to help with the development of the village. He could tell that Shizu understood that he was hiding something, or she just pretended that she didn't see anything. Nevertheless, Shizu's presence was welcomed, and no one mistreated her because she was a human. Instead, all of them looked at them with respect, but the female goblinas might be a bit jealous of Shizu. At night, when he was about to rest, someone knocked on the door of his room. Shizu was also living in his house that he created with his leaf as their house wasn't ready. However, it was normal as the destruction just happened in the village, and everyone started to build everything from scratch. Moreover, instead of the house, they prioritized the sewage, water supply, waste management, and anything that couldn't be seen by eyes as they were the most important to build a comfortable city. If they built a house first, it would be troublesome as they might need to renovate in case they needed to add something. For him, it was an easy thing, and with the help of the group of dwarfs and the workers from the hobgoblins, everything moved in the right direction. Only Remuru wondered whether it was okay for him not to do anything. Still, because of this, Shizu stayed with him and could create his own house with his leaf transmutation. When he opened his door, he saw Shizu was there. What's wrong? She lowered her head as her fingers kept moving, blushing, seemingly nervous, yet after a moment, she made up her mind. I can't sleep. Then, sleep with me. As for what they planned to do was there a need to explain. Chapter 167, From Now On, You Are Mine Shizu's petite body was nice to hold. Still, while she reminded him of Yosuzume, her chest was much bigger. They were easy to hold, and her reaction was refreshing to him. Shizu was all shy, yet she was brave enough to try anything as she wished to give him pleasure. This might happen fast, but with their limited time, why should they wait she knew her feelings toward him, and she only wanted to do whatever she could do as she didn't want to leave any regrets. After so many decades of being summoned to this world, Shizu only knew what it meant to become a woman now, yet while her body might be weak and petite compared to him, she resisted him hard and even tried to fight back, showing that she wasn't called a champion of humankind for nothing. Yet, this experience was unique as Shizu was so much older than him, especially since her reaction was like a girl, so he was a little bit too excited. Moreover, as her body was relatively small, her meat folds were tight, yet strangely enough, it was so soft and warm like he was being hugged with love. This feeling was unique. After reincarnating into a tanuki, he had been with many women, 
but he had to say Shizu was one of a kind. Meanwhile, Shizu was in a daze. She felt her head melting, and she could not think through it as the feeling of being conquered by him still lingered. It was impossible to forget and engraved into her mind. Initially, she wondered how something so big could fit in her body, but his technique was so magical, and was it her imagination that his size could be altered still, she forgot most of the things, and the only things she could think of were only the pleasure of her body. She couldn't think of anything. No, she didn't have the leisure to think of other things as she needed to focus on him, or she would be instantly defeated. However, maybe, because of her nature, who might seem weak, yet still wished to fight that she didn't give up and tried to give a counter, yet in front of an overwhelming might, every resistance was meaningless. By now, she could only lay on his chest, trying to catch her breath as she had never thought she could become such a lewd woman. Yet, as expected, sex was the fastest way for two hearts to become one. Tamajiki. Hmm. Can you tell me how long I can live? Frankly, he had thought of this woman as naive as how she confessed to him was so awkward and horrible. Yet, he realized this woman was perceptive. Tamajiki. She stared into his eyes and begged. Please tell me. He wanted her to live a carefree life without thinking of anything until he found a method to prolong her life, so why should you ask such a question to Majiki? I don't want you to bear this alone, so please tell me. Two years. He thought to lie, but in the end, he told the truth when he saw her determined eyes that were filled with guilt. If he lied at that moment, he knew she would be riddled with guilt as she thought her existence would burden him. By then, probably because of stress, she might die even faster, and this was something that he didn't want to happen. I see, two years. Shizu murmured when she heard how long she was able to live from his mouth. Neither of them said anything, and the room was silent as the sound of the wind and rustling leaves could be heard from outside. I am sorry. Why did you apologize? If, if I don't confess to you, then you won't have such a painful memory. When she realized everything, it was already too late. She felt that it was better to keep her feelings inside her heart as she was about to pass away. If he didn't know her feelings, then he wouldn't be troubled by her, and he could continue to live without thinking of her. While she wasn't sure what he would think when she died, it made her cry when she thought about it. Why are you crying? I. Look at me. He brought her close to him, staring into her reddened, moist eyes, yet she was unable to look straight at him when she thought about what she had done to him. It's too late. You can't regret it. But. I. I. Enough with an apology, regret, or guilt. What you need to do is just one thing. Huh. Compensate me. Compensate you how? For the rest of your lives, you are mine. He kissed her lips, causing her to open her eyes wide in surprise. That's my mark. From now on, you are my woman. While her eyes were full of tears, she stared at him shyly. Those words erased her doubt and made her know that she didn't fall for the wrong man, yet he was right, she was going to compensate him a lot, and in her remaining life, she was his. Let's sleep. You don't want to do it again. Is that okay? Um. Tonight, they did a lot dash dash. It was rather early in the morning, and everyone had started to work. While Ramiru didn't really need to sleep, as he was a human, sleeping was part of psychological comfort for him. Moreover, in this world, it was so boring as it had no entertainment, so he decided to sleep. Still, Ramiru had to say that Tamajiki was an early riser and also hard working. It made him somehow feel a bit guilty as he didn't do anything. However, he had to say Tamajiki's knowledge was amazing as he was able to do almost everything. Yes, almost everything. Yet, there was one thing that made him curious. Tamajiki, where is Shizu san? Sleeping, Tamajiki answered perfunctorily. As of now, he is supervising the building of the village. As for Shizu, 
they would be taken care of by the few goblinas that he had chosen as a maid. Still, he was thinking of building a house as he knew that he would leave this world sooner or later. It was impossible for them to live in the house created by his leaf. Still, when Ramuru heard that Tamajaki had few maids to take care of him, he couldn't help but ask, Tamajaki, are you rich in the previous world? Not really, but isn't a maid a romance for a man? You are right. As expected of his nephew, Ramuru thought that Tamajaki really knew how to enjoy life. We should make this village into a country, uncle. Then, we can do a lot of amazing things. Amazing things. Well, we only have a goblina now, but in the future, we can have a maid from Elf, Lamia, Centaur, Oni, and many others. Isn't that interesting? You are right. Ramuru nodded with a determined expression. Ah, but please don't misunderstand my intention as something dirty since I just want to help those who are in need since I can see that those Majins aren't living well in this world. You are right. Ramuru also nodded with a serious expression. We need to help those who are in need. For the second time, Tamajaki and Ramuru shook hands once again. Still, this time, everything was more peaceful as Shizu was resting, so they wouldn't be worried that their conversation would be heard. Still, suddenly he thought of something and asked, By the way, uncle, do you have a mage I steal? Mage I steal I have a lot of them, but what are you going to do with them? It's amazing that you have a lot of them, but it is good since I want to make a weapon. You want to make a weapon? Once again, Ramiru wondered whether there was something that Tamajaki couldn't do. Chapter 168, Legendary Grade Weapon Mage I Steel is the material extracted from raw magic ore. It is extremely rare that only 3 to 5% can be extracted from raw magic ore. This material is very durable and heat resistant. Compared to other rare metals that have at most a melting point of around 5000 degrees Celsius, Magi steel can withstand temperatures close to 10,000 degrees Celsius. Furthermore, it has a self-repairing trait and is exceptional at inducting magical power, enabling any objects made from Magi steel to grow with their user. All these properties made Magi steel highly desirable for making high-quality equipment with magical properties. Magisteel's excellent properties and difficulty in obtaining it resulted in its very high price in the market. Even a fist-sized chunk of magi steel is worth at least 20 times its weight in gold. This was also the reason why he didn't buy it, as his money needed to be invested in his business and the infrastructure of this village. Still, he somehow remembered that in the story, Ramiru held a number of magi steel as he had eaten many magic ore at the place where he was born. Now, what is a magic ore? Magic ore is the raw form of magi steel. Even without being processed into magi steel, it is considered equal in value to gold due to its being rare and versatile. Unlike regular ores, magic ore only forms around the vicinity of B rank monsters or higher. That is because when over a certain period of time, regular mineral ores are exposed to dense concentrations of magi culls, the ores will slowly absorb them and eventually turn into magic ore again due to the high level monsters lurking around them they are only accessible to high-ranking adventurers. Nevertheless, whether it was magi steel or magic ore, all of them were precious. However, Ramiru held a number of them inside his body like it was nothing, and frankly, this slime didn't know how expensive it was. Yet, because of this, Ramiru was able to get the group of dwarfs to come to this place. Compared to magic ore or the magi steel, without a doubt, the worth of the group of talented dwarfs was more valuable, especially when each of them had their own specialties. Kaijin, the leader of the group of dwarfs, is a talented builder, blacksmith, and craftsman. Dord is a first-rate craftsman, and his focus is on dyes and high-class attire. Myrd is a dwarf with few words, but having knowledge of construction and being well-versed in the arts, he is a one-of-a-kind genius. Garm, the last dwarf, is a skilled blacksmith and is also in charge of everyday clothing and underwear. Without a doubt, the four of them were the reason why this village could grow so fast. Still, 
Ramira quickly gave the Magi steel without much thought to Tamajiki before he followed him to the smithy, wanting to see how he was going to create a weapon. What are you going to make? Katana. What about your previous katana, I want it better. Tamajiki then told the knowledge of the equipment that he had learned from the books on the Blumont Kingdom. After he returned to this village, he brought many things, from books, seeds, and many other things. Money was, without a doubt, a great thing as it gave him many things, but to protect that money, one needed power. What about your previous weapon Ramiru asked curiously since he recalled that Tamajiki held a katana. It's a unique grade, so I plan to make a legendary grade. Is it so easy for you to make it? If it is the others, it might be difficult, but it should be possible for me. Do you want me to make you one too Tamajiki asked. Really is that okay? Of course, but uncle, try to keep some of the magi steels on your stomach for a long time. Why? I wonder if it is possible to create a god-grade material just by basking in your magi culls. Tamajiki knew that inside Ramira's body, the legendary dragon, Feldera, was inside, so being basked by the aura of this legendary dragon, it should be possible to evolve a certain material into better or perfect, right nevertheless, it was worth a try. As for using his body he might have a hole, but it didn't mean his original amount of magicule was a lot. Moreover, his relationship with Ramiru was good, so why not, right Ramiru was surprised, but when he thought that he would hold god great equipment, he agreed without hesitation. Still, Tamajiki had thought of many things in his head as he wanted to make his life comfortable, but everything had to be done one by one, so he wouldn't be overwhelmed. Lastly, his purpose of being in this world was to get stronger, so whatever it was, his strength was the most important thing. Soon, they arrived in the smithy of the village. As expected, Kaijin was inside. Ramurudana Tamajiki Bakan what's wrong Kaijin looked at the two in surprise. Why did you call him Bakan Ramuru asked Kaijin weirdly. While Kaijin called him with a polite suffix such as Dana, Kaijin called Tamajiki with the Bakan suffix, which meant a young master. Well, Ramuru had the feeling that Tamajiki was like a nobility or a boss or something, so he didn't feel strange about Kaijin's way of calling Tamajiki though he couldn't help but ask why Kaijin called Tamajiki that way. Well, Inyagami Bakan is like a prince, king, or something, so it can't be helped, Ramirudana. Kaijin rubbed his head nervously. Frankly, he felt a supreme dignity of a ruler from Tamajiki, so he dared not to be impolite, but it was rather awkward to say Sama, so he decided to call him Bakan. Kaijin, can you show me your blacksmith skill? Tamajiki didn't care about their conversation and directly requested. Akaijin was surprised, but then he nodded. Sure. He wasn't sure what Tamajiki wanted to do, but if Tamajiki wanted to see his skill, then he welcomed him. A dwarf is like this. If someone treats them sincerely, they will also treat others with sincerity. Moreover, Tamajiki had power, so Kaijin was even more respectful. Tamajiki only watched for a moment and soon learned everything, then, along with Analysis and Great Sage, he created a blueprint of his weapon before he made up his mind to make a weapon. When Tamajiki started to act, the rest of the dwarfs also watched. Ramurudana, what is Tamajiki Bakan going to do? Making a weapon. Making a weapon. 3x. The four dwarfs were surprised, but one of them was silent. Talk, boy. Ramiru looked at Myrd speechlessly. Did he have any experience as a blacksmith? I am not sure, but he probably just learned it now. 4x how to say, a blacksmith wasn't an easy job. It was a dangerous, exhausting, and delicate job, so someone needed a lot of years to train, yet Ramiru told them that Tamajiki had just learned. While they felt confused, their eyes soon widened, surprised, flabbergasted, and in a daze before they felt numb as they realized what kind of monster Tamajiki was. Tamajiki ignored all of them and just focused on his weapons. It wasn't how long he had been in this state, 
but he poured everything over him, ignoring everything, and just focused on his weapon. Everything was done with just a single weapon. Soon, a legend grade sword was born in this world. Chapter 169 Are the main heroines going to come soon when the sword was born? It was as if the world had lost its voice, and all the light was absorbed. Ramiru and the dwarf group who didn't leave were also mesmerized by the birth of this sword. Legendary Grade Weapon Even if this was their first time to see one, as this weapon hardly appeared in public and also few in numbers, they could tell immediately that this was that weapon. Did it finish? Yeah. Tamajiki also had awoken and observed his new weapon. It is a moderately curved katana, yet unlike the color of normal katana, it is pure black with a distinct milky colored trail that follows the edge of the blade. Somehow, the appearance of this sword reminded him of the Milky Way in the dark sky. Still, this weapon could evolve even more. However, this weapon was good enough for now. The only problem was the sheath since the blade was so sharp that a standard sheath might be cut because of its sharpness. While it didn't really trouble him, even if this sword didn't have a sheath, having a sheath was cooler, right yet, he had to say it amazed him since it was already night. It's already night. Huh. Yeah, you have been too focused on your weapon. From morning to night, he had focused on his weapon, but it was all good since he could create this legendary grade weapon. By the way, what's the name of this weapon? Name. Yeah, shouldn't you name it? Hearing Rimuru's question, Tamajiki wondered what he should name this weapon. Frankly, he didn't have a hobby to name something, however, when he felt that it was necessary, especially when many of his skills were named by the voice of the world, so somehow his inner child also felt that he wanted to start to name something, whether it was his weapon or his techniques. Let's see. Tamajiki stared at this weapon for a moment, then made up his decision. Jinga. Jinga. Yes, that's the name of this weapon since in the future this weapon will cut down a galaxy, so I name it Jinga Galaxy in Japanese. Um, that's a good name. Ramiru decided to ignore the part where Tamajiki bragged that he would cut down a galaxy. While he admitted that Tamajiki's swordsmanship was good, he felt that it was too far to cut down a galaxy. Yet, in the future, Tamajiki might be able to do so. Cutting Angel, Devil, and God. Tamajiki decided to do all of them. Nevertheless, it was a little late, and he thought of going back since he was sure that Shizu was waiting. No, they told him that Shizu had come and sent him food to eat, causing all of them to look at him in jealousy. Before he returned, he finished the food that was sent by Shizu before he walked away since the stares of Rimuru and the dwarf started to hurt him. This is probably what the protagonist felt when they were surrounded by many beautiful heroines and stared at angrily by the extras in the background. Nevertheless, he didn't care and thought that it was fun to see their expressions. However, when he went home, he was greeted by Shizu. Welcome back. Shizu welcomed him with a warm and gentle smile. She wore plain clothes with an apron on her body. You are tired, right? Do you want to take a bath or dinner first? I want to eat you first. Eh eh. Tamajiki felt that this newlywed life wasn't bad at all. Still, over the past few days, his days have been busy. It was rather hard to get his hands on the sheath since he wanted to get a good quality wood one that could grow along with the user like Magi Steel, but if it's impossible, then he could only bear it by using another Magi Steel, so for now, he was using his previous weapon, but while it was good, it was easily damaged as his swordsmanship wasn't something that could be handled by a normal sword. Fortunately, this world was full of monsters, and he could use them as material for his weapon. However, he could think of that later since he knew the days of the main heroines came was near, so, at this moment, he just stayed in the village, building his house where he could live with Shizu. Naturally, he also learned the skills owned by Ramiru and Shizu. After using Predator on Ifrit, Ramiru gained various skills from fire manipulation, ranged barrier, and body double. The fire manipulation aside, 
the last two skills were quite good for him. As for Shizu, even though Ifrit was taken out of her body, it didn't mean she was helpless. She could use magic, and as someone who was summoned from another world, she also got a unique skill. The magic that she taught him was fire magic, which was her specialty, and also summoning magic, which made her able to summon fire elementals to help her to fight. Fire magic aside, summoning magic was quite interesting as it could summon various beings from monsters, elementals, and even demons. So, should I be able to summon an angel? Probably, but instead of magic, he was more interested in Shizu's unique skill. Degenerate. It was a unique skill owned by Shizu, and it had two effects, Sentences and Separation. The first one Sentesis allows the user to transform two different targets into a single object. It can be used to chain the effects of several skills together, earning the user new skills with significantly less effort than would otherwise be required. The second one, Separation, allows the user to release the properties inherent to the target and separate them. Examples include but are not limited to, depriving a person of skill s with the exception of ones bound to their soul and removing foreign objects such as entities attempting possession or poisons from the target's body. Those two were amazing skills, and depending on how he was using them, their use could become something impressive. Tamajiki, it's time for lunch. Wait for a moment. Tamajiki walked down the stairs and looked at Chaizu, who brought him lunch. Oi, you guys. Go take a break. It's okay, Tamajiki-sama. We are not tired. Yeah, we can work until tomorrow. The group of hobgoblins workers that helped him build the house thought that they could work even harder, or rather they felt happy to build his house. If I say you go take a break, then go. You are interrupting my lunch. Everyone. Still, in the end, they could only docilely follow his order to take a break. What's for lunch to Majiki walked to Shizu, who was waiting for him. Sekora monster steak with stir-fried vegetables, salad, and also bread. Thank you. No, it's an easy thing for me. Shizu shook her head. She hardly had any skills other than fighting, so she couldn't help much. Nevertheless, she wanted to cook for him, especially when he was going to build a house for them. Then, let's eat together. On. As the two spread a sheet on the clean grass under the shade of the tree, they started to eat together. Still, as they ate, he felt that he should develop the food culture as there were hardly any seasonings in this world. Moreover, he also wanted sugar. While he had prepared various seeds and let the hobgoblins grow those plants, including sugar beet, it would take a while for them to grow. By the way, is there rice in this world? No, there isn't any. Shizu shook her head while she sighed. Rice was the staple food of the East. However, this world was like the West, so many of the things in this world, whether it was architecture, food, agriculture, animals, plants, and many others, were similar to those of the West. The bread was good, but without a doubt, they wanted rice. After the house is ready, let's do research on food. Food. Yeah, I plan to make shoyu Japanese soy sauce, mirin sweet vinegar, and miso. Really Shizu was excited. Help me, though. Um, leave it to me. Shizu nodded with a solemn expression. By the way, there is this costume that I want to try on for you later. On. Shizu nodded while lowering her head shyly. Yet, in that precious moment of lunch between them, someone interrupted them. Tamajiki-sama. Shizu-sama. A group of monsters has attacked us. Hobgoblin kneeled as he spoke about the seriousness of their current predicament. While Tamajiki was speechless, he got another telepathic message from Rumuru. Tamajiki, come and help me. Looking at Shizu, who was ready to help, Tamajiki also nodded while wondering whether it was the time for the main heroines to come. Chapter 170, Evil Demon What's wrong, uncle? When the two arrived, they met Rimuru, 
who was bouncing like a ball. We are being attacked. By who? Ogre. Ogre 2x. As expected, Tamajiki thought. He knew that it was the time for the main heroines to come. While he had Shizu, he was okay to add more as he also had Ellen in this world. Still, he knew that the appearance of the story and the reality were different. They hardly appeared the same, so when he arrived, he wondered whether they were really the heroines. Still, as they arrived, Riguru, Gobuta, Ranga, and even other Tempest Wolves and Hobgoblins were defeated by the group of six in front of them. Ogre. This is who they were. Ramiru, who had come, healed everyone with the potions he made, then asked, Riguru, explain the situation. What's happening here? The men on the ground are all okay. They are under the effects of a sleeping spell. Riguru then apologized since he was defeated so easily, yet this was normal since he didn't expect his opponents to be the ogre tribe. Naturally, whether Tamajiki or Ramiru, who had just been in this world for a while, understood what the ogre was, the ogre in their minds was different from the ogre in this world, especially when they wore armor and even a Japanese sword. However, as expected of an ogre, their appearance was like those of monsters. This was why Tamajiki also didn't show much interest when he saw them. There were two females among the group of six, yet those females could hardly be his type. However, when he thought about the female goblins that became cute goblinas, he thought such a transformation might happen to the two female ogres. Moreover, he also wanted to try how it felt to name a monster, as he had never tried it. Try it? It had been a while since the system talked, but he had to say the system was as abominable as ever. Still, when the three appeared, the fight stopped, and the two groups maintained a certain distance from each other, showing their wary. How to say, when Tamajiki appeared, all the dire wolves and hobgoblins felt relief as they knew how powerful Tamajiki was. They might not have seen him fighting, but his size alone was enough to crush all the hopes of their enemies. Still, even if Tamajiki didn't transform into his beast form, the group of ogres watched in wary, even if he didn't exert pressure and his aura, his appearance alone was enough to make them feel wary. After all, even if it was quite strange, the more human-like appearance of the monster was, the stronger they were, so because of this, they were wary of Tamajiki, who was in his hybrid form. Still, what the four male ogres didn't realize, the two female ogres felt their minds didn't work, and they just stared at his beast's golden eyes, petrified, unable to move, and mesmerized by his charm. Oi, you guys, I don't really understand the current situation, but are we able to talk about this peacefully? Unlike Tamajiki and Shizu, who thought to beat them up first, then talked, Ramiru thought to talk this up first since he thought there must be some misunderstanding. Ramiru, who had been ignored from the beginning, quickly became the center of attention. Slime this was clearly written on their faces. Yet, how could they not be surprised as it was their first time to see a talking slime in the beginning, Ramiru used Predator on Shizu and used her body to appear in front of people most of the time, but this time it was different as he didn't use Predator on Shizu, so his appearance was just like a normal slime. Naturally, Ramiru was being looked down upon as he also didn't have a hobby to spread his aura, so no one could tell how strong he was. Moreover, his race was slime, famous for being the weakest monster, so he was underestimated. Still, while they were surprised for a moment, their attention quickly gathered on Shizu. Brother, that person's mask. Shizu could feel that everyone was staring at her, which made her confused as it was her first time seeing all of them. Reveal yourselves, evil demon. Shizu. Hey, what do you mean by that? Ramiru was also dumbfounded when the leader of this ogre group seemed to point his finger at Shizu. Wearing a demonic item is not something a normal person would do. You seem to have disguised yourselves and suppressed your demonic aura, but you are too naive. Because the ogre tribe's shrine maiden won't be deceived. 3x Tamajiki, Ramiru, and Shizu looked at each other. 
Remuru, should I kill them how could Tamajiki feel calm when his woman was being pointed at and insulted like this no. Yeah, they seemed hurt, you should listen to them first, Tamajiki. Also, there might be some misunderstanding. With the kind and gentle personalities of Remuru and Shizu, they thought to listen to the story of the Ogre tribe first. However, would they even listen to us? 2x I will beat them up first before we can talk. What do you think after all, a monster is like this? Survival of the fittest. The rules of the monsters were simple. Survival of the fittest. The strong eat the weak. Oi, stop talking to yourselves and look at you ass, you demon. 3x to magic he beat them first. 2x even if they were kind, there was still a limit. They felt that it was better for Tamajiki to beat them up first, so they could correct their attitude as they were too rude. Okay then. Tamajiki walked in front of everyone and said, You worms. If you grovel on the ground and apologize now, then I will let you go. Everyone. Ramuru and Shizu were speechless. However, the group of ogres was in a daze before they were angry. Oof. How arrogant, do you think that you can look down on us, you demon? Then, without hesitation, they went for the attack. The first one was a giant ogre with a hammer, raising a wooden hammer high as he was ready to smash the magic key. However, know your place, worm. Tamajiki put his hands in his pocket as he swept the feet of this ogre, causing him to fall. Ah! While this giant ogre was confused, he saw Tamajiki's foot stomp on his face. Hiwaya! The giant ogre passed out as his eyes rolled out. You bastard! Then, a female ogre with purple hair appeared and swung a morning star at him. Tamajiki had to say that this female's ogre breasts were huge, but even if they were huge, he was calm since he wasn't exactly a big breast faction. He loved all types of breasts, so he wasn't going to give this woman mercy. No, at least he would give her a bit. As the morning star was about to slam into his head, he just moved slightly to the side, causing the female ogre to miss her attack, and hit the ground, but her eyes widened before she passed out as her stomach was hit by Tamajiki's knee. Soon. Someone from the dark suddenly stabbed his sword in his neck. This should be something fatal and dangerous attack, yet strangely enough, Ramuru and Shizu didn't feel worried. Instead, they felt sorry for the ogres facing Tamajiki. Facing such a fatal attack, Tamajiki jumped and did a roundhouse kick, precisely hitting the face of this ogre, causing his nose to break and almost disfiguring him. The blue-haired ogre didn't even have a chance to scream as he was thrown and passed out. 3x The three ogres were left staring at the scene in disbelief. The three ogres defeated by Tamajiki weren't weak. Instead, they were strong, but Tamajiki easily defeated them. Young master, you should take the princess and leave. The elderly ogre stood in front of the red-haired ogre since he knew their opponent was dangerous. Moreover, he saw the sword on the side of Tamajiki, yet from the beginning to the end, Tamajiki had never touched it, so what did that mean that meant all of them were so weak that they weren't worthy of his sword? Even worse, Tamajiki had never used his hands. Leave everything to this old man. Even if I have to lose my life, I will stop him. Shut up, old man. Right now, I am shouldering the hatred and regret of our dead tribesmen. Did you really expect me to run away after we finally met our enemy the red-haired ogre took out his katana and raised it high? Don't even joke with me. I still have dignity as the next leader. Rather than living in humiliation, I had rather die avenging my people. Young master. The elderly ogre stared at the young master ogre for a moment before he held his sword. Since it's come to this, allow this old man to follow you. Are you done talking? You bastard. Enough of looking down on. However, before the young master ogre finished his words, the two of them were beaten without mercy by Tamajiki. Tamajiki didn't even use his hands and only used his feet to defeat them. Still, before he was about to finish them, the princess ogre stood before him and raised her hands high, 
trying to stop him. What are you doing here? P please stop. We we apologize for our rudeness. P please, don't kill us. Coog. The young master ogre was on the ground, beaten up, frustrated by his weakness. Hmm. Tamajaki stared at the princess ogre and then pinched her small chin rudely. You are quite cute. Eh. The princess ogre was startled and showed a cute blush on her face. If you become my maid, I will let all of them go. You bastard. The young master ogre was enraged as he thought his little sister was going to be soiled by Tamajaki's dirty hands. Please live well, brother. The princess ogre looked at her brother with a warm smile. He he he, let me mark you first. Tamajaki laughed evilly and traced her luscious lips with his thumb slowly. The princess ogre realized her fate, and she resigned herself, yet as he moved closer, her heart was beating harder and harder as she watched him about to put his sharp fangs on her tender and soft body. Damn it. Damn it. The young master ogre let out an incompetent roar, and the rest wasn't much better. Enough of a joke, Tamajaki. Suddenly, Slime hit the back of Tamajaki's head, and Shizu also pulled his ear with a gentle smile. Do you want to make a harem in this world? Ow. Ow. Shizu, forgive me. 6x all the ogres stared at the scene in disbelief as they saw the nightmare that beat all of them was asking for mercy from the petite woman. Cough. Cough. Ramiru looked at the six of them and said, Everything is a misunderstanding, Okay how about we talk first, how to say, they weren't sure how to describe their feelings, but it was good to know that they weren't going to lose their lives. Still, the princess ogre didn't really mind becoming Tamajaki's maid, though. 